the federalist papers written by alexander hamilton james madison and john jay under the pseudonym publius were important in the ratification debates of the constitution throughout the country while the essays were originally written and published in new york a few were also published in newspapers in other states readers in new york mailed the federalists to all parts of the nation and delegates from other state conventions requested to be sent a copy of the entire two-volume book in some states these essays were even distributed to members of ratification conventions and used to counter anti-federalist arguments during debates however the main goal of the essays was to explain the constitution to the people by clarifying how the new government would operate as well as by justifying why each section was included federalist twenty three is especially important as it helped to explain the need for a stronger government with more powers which many people feared at that time the articles of confederation had created a weak and limited central government in america following the american revolution because the states wanted to keep their power which they did not have under british rule the problems that arose in the nation as a result of the weak government showed that a stronger central government was needed and so the constitution was framed alexander hamilton and james madison the primary authors of the federalist papers both supported the stronger central government provided for in the constitution However, Hamilton wanted a government even stronger than the one framed by the Constitution, and Madison wanted a much more centralized government. The Constitution did not perfectly satisfy their ideals, but the Constitution was an improvement on the Articles. Thus, they wrote the Federalist Papers to gain the support of others in the ratification process. During the process of and the debates over ratifying the Constitution in New York, Hamilton wrote and published Federalist 23, which was one of the essays of the Federalist. In this particular essay, Hamilton examined the strengthening of the powers of the government in the Constitution. He wrote, The authorities essential to the care of the common defense are these, to raise armies, to build and equip fleets, to prescribe rules for the government of both, to direct their operations, to provide for their support. These powers ought to exist without limitation, because it is impossible to foresee or define the extent and variety of national exigencies or the correspondent extent and variety of the means which may be necessary to satisfy them. The circumstances that endanger the safety of nations are infinite, and for this reason no constitutional shackles can wisely be imposed on the power to which the care of it is committed. In this excerpt, Hamilton explained that for the safety of the nation, there should not be any restrictions on the power of the government in respect to national defense. This referenced the elastic clause of the Constitution, which allowed Congress to create any law necessary to uphold the duties, one of which was to provide for the national defense given to Congress in Article I. Hamilton also wrote that no one can predict exactly what dangers and troubles that America will face in the future, so the government must be prepared for any crises that may arise. Hamilton was recalling the government's inability to suppress Shays' rebellion under the Articles of Confederation. If the government had had enough power, the rebellion would have been stopped much quicker. Therefore, in order to avoid a similar situation, the federal government would have to have enough power to handle any circumstances. The people and anti-federalists also worried that perhaps the elastic clause would give the federal government too much power and create a tyranny like the one they experienced under Great Britain. In order to convince his opponents that the clause was beneficial, Hamilton wrote this portion to show that the elastic clause was indeed necessary for the safety of the nation and included to benefit the Americans. In a later portion of the essay, Hamilton also extended his argument to encompass all of the duties of the government, not just that of protecting the people. Moreover, Hamilton further expanded upon why the federal government needed more power to carry out its duties. Is there not a manifest inconsistency in devolving upon the federal government the care of the general defense and leaving in the state governments the effective powers by which it is to be provided for? Will not weakness, disorder, and undue distribution of the burdens and calamities of war, an unnecessary and intolerable increase of expense, be its natural and inevitable concomitants? Have we not had unequivocal experience of its effects in the course of the revolution, which we have just accomplished? Hamilton justified that there was no logic in giving the federal government the duty to protect the nation if the federal government was only given nominal power and the state governments were given the actual power. Hamilton spoke from and was alluding to his first-hand experiences in the Revolutionary War as an aide to Commander-in-Chief George Washington. Hamilton saw how difficult it was to operate and fund the army when the government did not have enough power to do so. 
While Hamilton's experiences were related to the defense aspect of the federal government's duties, Hamilton implied that one could also apply the same reasoning to the other duties of the national government. Furthermore, Hamilton described the new powers of the federal government in issues that a stronger central government would solve. Defective as the present confederation has been proved to be, this principle appears to have been fully recognized by the framers of it. Though they have not made proper or adequate provision for its exercise, Congress have an unlimited discretion to make requisitions of men and money to govern the army and navy to direct their operations. It was presumed that a sense of their true interests and a regard to the dictates of good faith would be found sufficient pledges for the punctual performance of the duty of the members to the federal head. Hamilton noted the main faults and failures of the Articles of Confederation, which is the federal government's lack of power to enforce their laws. While Congress could ask the states for money and soldiers, Congress could not force the states to give them the money or soldiers. The federal government had to rely on the people and states' virtues. The inability to tax did not allow Congress to repay soldiers after the Revolutionary War, leading to rebellion. By strengthening and giving the new government more power, these issues could be avoided completely. Additionally, Hamilton was addressing the Anti-Federalists who believed that the nation could be run solely based on the people's virtues and a strong, powerful government was not needed. Hamilton was telling the Anti-Federalists that their attempt at such a government had failed and the people should support a stronger government, not fear it. This idea reflected a trend in Hamilton's political life. Hamilton always wanted to strengthen the government. During his time as President Washington's Secretary of Treasury, Hamilton formed a financial plan that included the establishment of a national bank and the assumption of all state war debts along with the national debt. These actions strengthened the government since investors and creditors would want to ensure the government's survival, increasing its power. Finally, Hamilton directly addressed his opponents and advised readers not to follow the anti-federalist beliefs. This is the strongest argument in favor of an energetic government, for any other can certainly never preserve the union of so large an empire. If we embrace the tenets of those who oppose the adoption of the proposed constitution as a standard of our political creed, we cannot fail to verify the gloomy doctrines which predict the impracticability of a national system pervading the entire limits of the present confederacy. This conclusion of the essay reminded the people of the importance of and the need for a stronger government in America. With a weak government like the one under the Articles of Confederation, the lack of power would create many issues as proved by past experiences. However, Hamilton's other motivation was that the Federalist Papers were a form of propaganda as well. Hamilton wanted to persuade the Americans and anti-Federalists that the Constitution would really benefit the nation. Hamilton did this not only by actually explaining the benefits of the Constitution, but also by attacking the Anti-Federalists and blatantly stating that the people should not follow the Anti-Federalist beliefs. In the last part of Federalist 23, Hamilton claimed that if the people in America submitted to the Anti-Federalists and did not ratify the Constitution, the nation would inevitably fail because of the weak government, and a strong government was the best way to ensure the success of the country. Logically, the people would want the nation to succeed and therefore support the Federalists in ratifying the Constitution. In conclusion, the Federalist Papers were important essays in the ratification debates over the Constitution. These essays were read in multiple states and aided the Federalists in responding to anti-Federalist arguments in the debates. A major issue at the time was that many people were concerned about the strong government the Constitution created. Americans feared that it would result in a tyranny like Great Britain since the memory of the monarchy was recent. Federalist 23 by Alexander Hamilton justified why the framers of the Constitution strengthened and gave so much power to the government through the Elastic Clause, and reassured that the clause was included with the best interest of America in mind. The essays were also a form of propaganda used to gain support for the Federalists and for the Constitution. The Federalist Papers played a big role in history since the essays outlined the main Federalist arguments and were instrumental in gaining popular support for ratification.